In uh, this Grasshopper Rhino tutorial, we'll learn how to interactively create necklace. This one was done in Rhino, but the render is done in Modo. Something very common is to distribute an object along a path. So those three nodes uh, are very common. Now, something a hair more tricky to do is to control the distribution. They start small, they go larger, and they go back small. You see, small, that's a Bezier curve, large, small. But we could use something else. We could use a sign, like a wave, in, in trigonometry and say large, small, large, small, repeating. There's some things that are even more interesting, like a Perlin, a noise that defines fractal kind of mountain -y. But sometimes you want to be more precise with, you know, you want to define how small and how big. So then we can go here more complex here and use a domain and a, a remap number to really define how big they are and how small they start. I'm just about to teach you how to do all of this from scratch. But remember, this, those three nodes are already very powerful. With this, you can do a lot. And this with this is enormous power. This is really optional, like you don't have to use this in everything. So if you don't understand this, I hope you will, uh, you're still good. So let's start from scratch and delete, close this. So we'll start in Rhino where we'll draw a necklace. Many ways you can do this. I'll just use the regular curve like this, like that. Maybe go at zero, enter. And make sure it doesn't, has a nice, this a bit wider, voila, escape, um, and we're going to mirror this. So select this, MI, enter, zero for the mirror plane, enter, hold shift to be straight, and now you've got it. So we can select both, control J to join, so now it's one curve, and if you want the curve to look a bit more 3D, you could just do this. Voila, and you could do that. You could scale them apart, you see? It's completely up to you. Grasshopper to load the visual programming. Make sure we're at 100%. I just want to bring a curve node so I can load this data. Double click, type curve, orange mean it's empty. So you right click on it and you go set one curve. Gray means it has data. So when you click this, it's reading this. As you know, this curve has a length. I'm not sure, maybe it's 180 mil long. We could check it in Rhino here. But I don't want to be dealing with the length because then I'm going to always be, you know, what about if the change, uh, the length change? So what we want to do, we want to normalize. It's called reparameterize. We want to tell him whatever length it is, always go from zero to one. So if it's 180 mil, 250 millimeter, doesn't matter. This is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, up to one. Right click and we say, Reparameterize something I use a lot, then you don't have to guess. Now we want to subdivide this many times, so we're going to use a divide curve. This is a node that I use all the time, very useful. Just with this, you can do a lot. And now the count, if we look, it's 10, so it's dividing this curve into 10 step, uh, 10 point. But if I create a slider from let's say 5 to 80 and rename it number or count. I can number of pearl. I can parametrically, interactively update this number. And the only thing I need to do is type sphere. And I'll have a bunch of little sphere. And you don't need anything else. So just with this, you can do a lot of interesting things. I, I use this logic really, really often. No more than that. Could use a slider for the radius, but they will all be the same size. What I want to use here, it's something called a graph mapper. It's very powerful because you right click and I'm going to start with a Bezier. Bezier, it's a very common curve. So zero to let's say 0 0.6 to zero. We can use this to define a number. The problem with this is that if I put a panel, it doesn't really define anything. It needs an input. You see, there's no data. So what I need here is to generate a series of numbers, like 0, 1, 2, 3, or 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. You could do this with a series, but it's hard to control. So I prefer using a range. 
range is the same as series, but range you can define the last number. You have a step. So by default or range, generate 10 number, 0 to actually 11 with the 0, the index. If you want to change this, you have to put an input to the step. So you can go here. And now if your step is 31, you'll get 31 number. OK, 32 with the 0. So I can delete this, and now I can put this into the graph mapper. And as you know, it works from 0 to 1. So this has been reparameterized. So now we can do some really cool stuff. And this is enough. You don't need more than that. This is actually a very powerful tool. It looks like nothing because you got five, six nodes. Because look, you could do this. But I can also right click and use a sign, you know, like a wave sign, the trigonometry sign. And if I drag it, you can already generate some cool thing. And you could still change the number and change the shape. That's the power of Grasshopper. And just with this, like I said, it's good enough to do a lot of things. We could use a Perlin noise, you see, and create some randomness, like fractal. I'm going to take it a step further. So the first thing we did was to subdivide the curve. And it's those three nodes. So you could select the three and go Control G and call it, you click, right click, and you can go uh, Divide Curve. That's what this one does. And this one, we could call it Control G, uh, right click, and you could call it Radius uh, Designer because it plays with those numbers. And to push it further, you don't have to use this, it's just an option. You could use a domain where you could say, I want the small sphere pearl to start at point two and the larger one, two. So then you could really control a domain is like a menu. It's um, it takes a, a, a sequence. So if you have a number that goes from point two to twenty, you could take that sequence and remap it to something smaller or larger, but with the same order. So let me show you. So it's called remap. You're remapping the number, and often remap works with a con work with a with a construction domain. And the reason is because you need two input. You need a domain, uh, not this one. You double click. You need uh, this one. Because this gives you two input. You can say the smaller is 0.2 and the larger point, uh, 2.0. 2, 4. Voila. All to copy it. So this is going to be the larger and this is going to be the smaller. So the smaller will be 0.4. So we connect this here. And this is the original value. So you see value. This is the new value. So it's taking the value, shuffle it here. So look, just to show you, if we go with panel, we have all of our number here. 0 0.6, 0 0.5 with the noise. Huh? So we have, uh, they go around 0.6. If you go here, now you see they are much bigger, one full. But they have, they have the same order. So this lets you control the radius interact interactively. You see, so now I can go like this. So I don't have tiny one now. Or oh, tiny, but not too tiny. So this logic here, so this we could call it min, minimum. And this we could call it maximum. All of this is the size of our radius. That's it. Within the domain, within that sequence. Control G, uh, radius size. It's nothing more than that. Voila. But like I said, those two are really uh, what makes it special. And when you are happy with the result, you right click here and you say bake to send it back to Rhino. You select the layer and now the, your sphere are here. You can go model, render or 3D print.